Pew, pew. Hi. Welcome to another episode of The J Situation. This is a tabletop review of the new Sightmark Wraith digital night vision scope. Note that this scope can also be used during the day. So, although it is night vision, uh, it does have day functions and it is fully operational during the day, at dawn, at dusk, at night, um, wherever you want to use it. Included in the box, you get the Wraith scope, an included IR flashlight with a Picatinny rail mount. You get a hex key for adjusting the flashlight mount. Um, you get a uh, lens cloth an objective lens cover that is attached to the scope and you get the user manual as well. Sightmark is based in Mansfield, Texas near Dallas. They manufacture daytime optics including traditional scopes, uh, reflex sights, uh, red dots, um, lasers like laser sights, laser bore sights which are actually one of their coolest products ever, um, binoculars and things like that along with some digital night vision devices like the Photon RT scope and now the new Wraith. Um, I previously reviewed the Sightmark CoreShot A-Spec, which is sort of a medium-sized reflex red dot sight um, at a very economical price point, uh, and you can check out that video on my channel as well. Um, in general, products from Sightmark are priced very competitively, and they are covered with a lifetime warranty. Um, however, it should be noted that certain things like the imaging sensors on their night vision products as well as the LEDs, uh, etc. are covered under a three-year warranty. So, um, just wanted to share that differentiation. So, very briefly, um, I want to explain how digital night vision works. So, where a typical digital camera would gather and interpret light in the visual spectrum, uh, with its sensor, and then it would display that information on a screen, they usually have an IR filter inside, uh, a piece of glass or plastic that's coated in such a way that IR light bounces off and visible light goes through. Uh, this is done so that the image processing of the camera doesn't have to deal with the extra wavelengths of light, and it makes for uh, easier image processing uh, for the hardware and software to deal with. So, pretty much all digital cameras can see IR, or infrared light. Um, digital night vision usually uses a supplementary beam or IR light to illuminate your objective, and since the sensor doesn't have an IR filter in front of it, you can see all the reflected IR off of your target, uh, whether that be a deer or a hog or whatever objective you're, you're targeting. Um, so, supplementary IR for digital night vision is the name of the game. Okay, so let's go over all the different components of the Wraith. On the forward objective lens housing, you have a rubber lens cover, and that's included with the sight. Um, it can be completely removed and replaced with a generic flip-up cover if you want to. If I were purchasing this scope, that's probably what I would do. Um, I'm not that big a fan of the design of this included cover. Um, I find that it's easy to occlude the objective lens with its placement. So if I take it off here and I kind of flip it up, you see it's retained by this rubber piece that fits in this recessed groove on the objective housing, which is cool, right? But when I do that, sometimes it kind of goes forward and it gets in the way and I really because I want to adjust the focus it just kind of floats there and it's just a it's kind of cumbersome to me um, that's just my opinion just my experience in using it I would probably get rid of this and put like a Butler Creek on there or something like that you know what I mean I'm sure you could find one to fit uh, that's not the end of the world just a small uh, nitpicky thing so I'm gonna take this off so I can talk about the side more so much cleaner without it. The 
50 millimeter lens can be seen here. And note that the base optical magnification of the Wraith is 4x, which is fairly high when compared to something like a Pulsar Trail XP50, for example, which is a thermal sight, um, and that native magnification, they say, is 1.6, which is really around 2. Um, as many folks will be using this scope at night, keep this in mind. Keep that 4x in mind. For day use, 4x base magnification is more typical, um, or 3x, you know, something like that uh, for your, your day rifle scopes. But w at nighttime, when you have a base level mag of uh, 4x, um, it does take some getting used to. Your depth perception at night is a lot different, so you're only seeing stuff through the scope and not with your naked eye. So uh, if you night hunt, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, just something to think about. Um, moving aft on the scope body, um, you have the focus for the objective lens. So all the zooming on this site is done through software. Okay, it's all digital zoom. So this knob is simply a focus knob, just like the Pulsar Thermals um, or other digital type of, of weapon sites. This is a focus knob. And then what that's doing is mechanically um, moving the optics. Um, immediately behind the uh, objective focus on top of the scope, you'll find a standard integrated Picatinny rail. The included IR light mount affixes to that. The rail has five slots. Um, you don't have to put the included IR rail, um, or rather the IR light onto the rail. Um, you could place this on an AR handguard rail, for example, or you know you don't even have to do that at all. You you can uh, you can use a more powerful IR light. You don't have to use this light. Uh, you could use um, supplementary or separate IR light uh, that you have already, or that you can purchase. Um, the light that's included with the scope has an objective beam focus. So you can focus and, you know, widen the beam, narrow the beam, things like that, just like a typical flashlight would do, except this is an IR, so you can't see it during the day. Um, it has a push button switch on the back. And what that does is it toggles four positions, three levels of intensity and off. So... It's important to note that the wavelength of IR that is emitted by this light is in the 850 nanometer wavelength. Um, it has a visual red LED glow. So I'm going to hold this to the camera and see if we can see it. I'm going to turn it on. Well, the digital camera is seeing IR. Uh, it, to me, when I look at it, it's red. But what I tell you about the IR? <laughs> See the changes in intensity? I turn it off. Um, I know that you're, if you're not familiar with IR, you're going to think I'm bullshitting you right now. But you see that that's bright. That's actually red. Um, and you cannot see the IR with a naked eye. But the video camera is picking up the IR. So how about them apples? Um, When you're hunting at night with this thing, the red LED is visible, so keep that in mind. It's not bright, but it is a light, and if you're going completely dark, um, you can step up to um, a, a longer wavelength of IR, and usually those lights don't emit um, anything. So that's just something to think about if you're looking for something high speed. This is the included light. Um, we'll go into the effectiveness later, but, uh, you know... With IR lights, the sky's the limit, and you can really find them relatively easy on the market. The light is clamped into the mount um, and tightened with two hex screws. Uh, it came with that wrench I showed you earlier. 
um, to, to tighten those, those screws. Um, you can loosen these to, to push the, the light forward and aft in this mount. Um, you have a Picatinny mount here. You unscrew this and then you can fix that to your rail. Pretty standard stuff. On the left side of the scope body, there's a battery compartment cover. It has this latch and you can flip it up like so. Unscrewing this removes the cover. You see the screw there and that screw interfaces with an embedded female receptacle in the sight body around this plastic housing so you have a brass um, embed there and there's plastic around the batteries and the actual uh, housing is aluminum so that's kind of how that works um, you can see that there is a key there and a notch in the cover so it only goes on one way so you don't have to worry about messing up your polarity because you can only get this in one, one direction and you can see that uh, the battery polarity is written or inscribed on uh, the housing. Um, the battery cover does have a rib rubber gasket which is a good feature um, and it will most likely keep the battery compartment dry from brief rain or splashes and other non-submersible water exposure. Uh, the unit is IP55 water resistant. So uh, what that means, the, the first five means it's dust protected but not dust tight. And the second five means that the unit can withstand a 6.3 millimeter diameter water jet from any direction with no harmful effects. So that, that's exactly what the test standard says, and so that now you know. Um, you can use it in the rain, <laughs> and, and you'll be good. Um, these batteries are double A's, so pretty common, right? I chose to use um, Energizer Lithium batteries uh, because anytime I use double A batteries, uh, that's what I use. Um, they tend to give a more consistent current draw uh, over the life of the battery, and uh, I've had very good luck with these in things like deer feeder, or um, uh, sorry, uh, deer cameras, game cameras, um, and things like that. So, uh, yeah, um, I, I found that to be um, good. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on, show you how that works. You have the notch, the um, key is forward there. You press it on, you can take it in your hand, and while having it in your hand, you simultaneously press, and you turn clockwise, and you're tightening, you're tightening, you don't have to he-man it until it's snug. When it's snug, you flip it down so it's out of the way, and boom, you're sealed, and you are ready to go. On the right side, of the scope body, you have a rubber cover. This cover has two molded icons. Um, one of them indicates a data card and the other indicates a USB connection. When removing the cover, you'll see a slot for um, storing uh, your micro SD card. Um, data. So that's captured photos, recorded videos, and you use the slot for updating the firmware on the device, which I recently did um, with this this device actually, this the same the same one. And it was a pretty simple process. Um, a quick side note about that. Sitemark personnel listen to customer concerns and issues. Um, they're fairly active on social media, 
So firmware updates can come faster than you may think for a device like this. So that's pretty cool. They're always listening to customer feedback. Uh, so if you do own a Wraith um, or you are prospective owner of a Wraith and you have a question about uh, features that you're wondering if um, they will add, you know, go on Facebook or something, contact these guys, or you can even call them uh, in Mansfield and they'll talk to you about it. So that's pretty cool. So having, having the flexibility to do that yourself um, and not having to send the unit off is um, really great. The micro USB connector can be used to power the scope with an external battery pack. Um, if you're going to be using a scope longer than about four or five hours, um, I would recommend using an external battery pack, of which there are hundreds to choose from. Get those from Amazon. Or you can just use, you know, pack some extra AA batteries. Uh, you know, it's, it's up to you. The way that the micro USB card slot is oriented with it, um, within the scope body, to me, seems like very good placement and it doesn't seem like it will be adversely influenced by recoil impulse. Um, keep in mind that if you're recording a video which involves reading or writing uh, to the storage card, you don't want the contacts to separate between the, the storage card and the internal contacts of the scope. Um, so that would, that would cause data corruption, uh, unpredictable software results. I think that the way this is oriented um, is good, and I think that Sightmark thought about that. Uh, so that's very important because there are devices on the market that use removable storage for storing media that's recorded on a, on a device that is subject to firearm recoil, and there have been issues with those types of devices, but I think Sightmark licked it with this. So that's that's a good detail and uh, that shows some some uh, forward thinking on their part which I think is a great thing. On the bottom of the sight body you'll find a Picatinny rail mount um, that attaches the scope to your rifle. Two screws that fit into the Picatinny rail slots are provided. Um, they tighten one continuous side of the mount. So let me show you how that works. So I'm gonna unscrew these guys a little bit. So this whole entire piece is solid. Um, so when you tighten these screws, you get a very even clamping force, um, or rather you get an even distribution of the force along, uh, longitudinally here, or axially. Um, the mount can be disconnected from the scope by removing these two hex bolts as well. So that's just, you know, it's pretty simple. No frills mount and it's included with the scope. So that is um, pretty cool. And the quality is pretty good. It does have flathead slots if you need to use a tool to tighten it. The button assembly is immediately behind the rail on the top of the scope. You have five buttons, okay? You have the power button in the middle, and then you have four arrow buttons surrounding it. You have up, down, left, and right. The power button turns on the scope, and then it will turn it off by holding it down for three seconds. You get a countdown for that on the screen. With the new firmware update, if you hold down the the rear or back arrow button, it will put the display to sleep. If you tap the power button, the screen comes alive again. If you tap the power button with the screen on, that takes you into the menu system where you can do all kinds of things like zero the reticle, change the reticle, change the reticle color, set the time, the date, uh, all, all that good stuff. Um, the four buttons on the outside here allow you to navigate the menus when you're not using the menus, you can record a video by pressing the right arrow key. Uh, stop recording it by hitting it again. If you tap the left arrow key, 
you cycle through day mode, black and white night mode, and green night mode, which is kind of cool. It can be easier on your eyes, depending on your preference. Um, tapping the up and down arrow keys will activate digital zoom. You can zoom from 1x to 8x. So with a base level of 4x optical zoom, that's an effective zoom of 4x to 32x. Right, so you're multiplying your base level of four times one, that gives you four, then you're multiplying base level of four times eight, that's 32, so four to 32. Moving further aft on the scope, you have the ocular focus assembly. Um, this is your diopter adjustment, um, just like we've seen on a lot of different sites. It focuses the view of the digital screen on your shooting eye. This is pretty standard. Um, and it's great for folks who wear correct, corrective lenses, etc. Everyone has different eyesight. Um, because you can easily adjust this on the fly and get good focus on the screen with or without your glasses on, for example, or you have a different shooter, um, you know, it's pretty easy to adjust. It has uh, some knurling on it. It's easy to grip. Um, I like it. On the uh, eyepiece housing, there's a collaps collaps collapsible eye cup uh, light shield. Similar to other night scopes, this eye cup can help to prevent the display lighting up your whole face. Um, though the display will still catch a rectangular beam that's relatively bright, some folks remove these. Um, I removed one on my Pulsar thermal scope and I replaced it with a PVS 15 amber filter. I'm not sure what the diameter of this housing is. Um, you can remove it. So, you can see the screen there. Um, to put it back on, you just kind of do that, and you're good to go. Um, I'm not sure what the diameter of this is, so I'm not going to say it's compatible with various night vision device filters. You'll have to investigate that on your own, but if you have any feedback regarding this, let me know in the comments, and perhaps some, some people can chime in. A little bit about the technical specifications of the site. The digital sensor resolution is 1920 by 1080, so it's fairly high resolution for a digital night vision device. And the display, although it is a uh, liquid crystal display, it actually looks really nice. The display resolution is 1280 by 720. Um, I'm super pleased with the way the display looks. It has exceeded my expectations. Um, and uh, it's really crazy because, you know, you use it during the day and, and uh, it's almost like you're looking at a TV screen. So it's pretty cool. I, I think that's pretty good for the price point. And the resolution is much higher than you would think you would get from something like this. So let's talk about the race performance. My first observation is that the scope is pretty heavy. Um, this thing weighs 36 ounces with batteries, so it's one and a quarter pound. Uh, the housing is aluminum, and there's a lot going on in here. Okay, You have your, your optics, your housing, your electronics, your mount. Um, so it makes sense, I guess especially given the type of material they used for the housing. This is just an observation, okay? Um, we're not talking uh, high-end budget here. Uh, we're talking $500. So, you know, don't expect space-age stuff, but do know this thing weighs 36 ounces, so you put it on the gun, it'll, I guess it'll help you with your recoil. Um, but it certainly is not going to win any backpacking contests. Um, I took it out on an extremely humid night here in South Texas, and I compared it with uh, three thermal products, which isn't really fair, but nonetheless, I'll, I'll tell you about it. Um, I compared it with the, the Pulsar Trail LRF XP50, the Helion XP50, and the Axiom Key XM30. Uh, you can find reviews of all those on my, on my channel. Um, I found the Wraith's image to be refreshingly crisp. 
when I made sure to put it in the night mode, <laughs> man, if you forget to put it in night mode, you'll be wondering what the heck is going on. Unlike thermal, which has nothing to do with visible light, um, like I explained earlier, this is a digital night vision device, and so it can be used during the day. And in the daytime, you get a very high quality 1080p resolution color image on the display in the uh, in the nighttime, it's a little different. Um, you get a fantastic image during the day, but to get the black and white or the emerald display at night, you have to hit that left arrow button right there on the top of the scope um, to get to go into either of those two night modes, or you won't see anything. So this is common sense stuff, um, but it's easily overlooked if you were new to the device. So that's just something that I think should be highlighted. The site has a very good image. I was extremely pleased with the included IR light for 100 yard engagements or so. Um, folks are reportedly using the included light after 200 yards. And I don't doubt that. Um, I just didn't spot any objectives at that distance with the scope. They, <laughs> In my hunting that night, it was like everything was like 100 yards in or like 300 yards out. So there was nothing 200 I could really see. I didn't really get a good look at um, the, gr the grass or anything or trees at 200 yards. I, I wasn't seeing much. Um, at 300 yards, I tried to spot cattle and I was unable to with this device. Um, I verified the range with my Pulsar Trail LRF Thermal, so I knew the cattle were there, but I couldn't see them with this scope and with the included IR light. I have no doubt with better IR light, I would be able to spot them, just uh, not as this is set up um, from the factory. Um, I mentioned the weight earlier, but I want to mention the feel. The sight feels solid. It's, it's heavy, sure, um, but hey, it's also robust. Uh, it has a 308 recoil rating, um, which is nice to know. But an important thing for me is knowing that it's not made of flimsy plastic that's going to crack or dent or warp. Uh, the machined aluminum housing is robust for what it is, and it's fairly compact. Uh, you know, if you take off this eye, eye cover, this thing's pretty slick, man. I think if I bought one... I would probably put, I'd figure out a way to put a filter on here and just, I'd be going pretty high speed with it. I like it. Regarding the lens cover, um, I, I, I don't like the lens cover. Uh, so what I would do is I would go with a third party flip up lens cap. Um, a lot of folks have their favorites, so pick a Butler Creek or similar, um, depending on the preference. And I think you'd be pretty happy with it. However, make sure that if you do decide to go with a flip-up cap, it can flip open in a direction that does not obscure the IR light beam uh, if you choose to mount the included IR light directly on the scope and not on your AR rail or other location. So do your homework and plan your configuration if you decide to listen to me. <laughs> um, as far as intended use goes, I'm used to spotting things at long distances with thermal performing my stock to get closer, and then engaging. I think this scope is probably good for engaging when close and probably ideal for those hunting at known distances. For example, perhaps you want to hunt a deer feeder during the day, stay out at night, and kill the raccoons and pigs and coyotes and whatever else is hanging around after dark. Um, this scope is perfect for that. Um, and at $500, I don't see how you could do any better. Um, if I was in the market for a night optic to get me in the game, and I didn't want to invest three grand, I would buy this. Um, for sure. No question. Great way to get into night hunting game and see if it's for you. Um, then maybe invest more when you figure out it's the coolest thing ever, which you definitely will. I hope you enjoyed this tabletop review of the Sightmark Wraith. I posted some Wraith and thermal comparison images on my Instagram page. Um, go check them out. 
and follow me on Instagram if you like, at the J Situation. Uh, to keep up to date with what I'm doing, um, I'm pretty active on there. Uh, you can check out my website, thejsituation.com. Uh, I have a podcast, and there are all my links to social media um, are on there as well. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when I post more stuff. Um, if you have any questions regarding the, the video or this site, please let me know in the comments and I will do my best to respond in a timely fashion. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Pew, pew.